Hey folks, AstralThingsIndustry.com. I received a message from a viewer just discussing or asking the question about what is this Aletragus line? Well, that was that's a great question. And certainly, uh, not only what is it, but what are some of the indications and why do we use it? So Aletragus, um, as defined in the glossary prosthodontic terminology, is a line running from the inferior border of the ale of the nose to some defined point of the tragus of the ear. Now what was I talking about? Good old Wikipedia. <clears throat> Decent enough reference for our purposes today. The tragus of the ear is just this little pointed eminence of the, uh, just covers the external auditory meatus. And in the definition of ala tragus line, it could be any point along the tragus. Now the ala of the nose is this wing or lateral surface of the external nose. So it's a little fibro fatty tissue here. And typically the point is defined as the most inferior border of that. Now interestingly enough, uh, it's also called Camper's line and sort of went sort of trying to figure out who was Camper and I asked my friend Dr. Insani and sure enough he said look at uh, anthropology and Camper was a Dutch physician and in 1770, you can read it for yourself in Wikipedia again, sufficient enough for our purposes today, the facial angle, he sort of coined Camper's line, which was Aletragus. Well, so you have essentially Aletragus. So you can measure, according to Camper, you measure in the most superior portion of the tragus to the inferior portion of the ala. But number of studies, I mean, I don't know how many studies, have come up trying to figure out what is the most accurate point. Is it superior, middle, inferior? And what are they trying to establish? Well, often what you can use, let's go back to here, often they use it to try to determine uh, what is the level of the occlusal plane relative to the Aletragus line. Um, in dentures we use it, in fixed you can use it, but after conversing with many folks, it, it more is, it, it, in the literature is so all over the place, more controversial, more it appears uh, opinion based that it really is a, just a reference point and a reference line and I'll show you why in a second. So in complete dentures one of the steps is uh, taking a fox plane and some sort of uh, marking, marking either on the patient's uh, side of their face, profile or with a, uh, a tongue blade, just seeing how your occlusal rim is relative to the Aletragus or Camper's line. The problem is, is that these are soft tissue landmarks. Okay, so one of the difficulties in using soft tissue landmarks is with my amigo, Dr. Insani, they're uh, slightly movable. So you can see he's moving the, uh, the ala of the nose. And Tragus, can you move your, can you move your ear? Not really, but if you take your hand, yeah, there you go. So you can see those points uh, can move subtly. So one of the steps, the classic steps in fabricating complete dentures is evaluating and establishing your plane of occlusion relative to Camper's line, but also taking into consideration in your denture, your wax rim, aesthetics and phonetics of the maxillary anterior segment. So with that being said, that although we do establish a reference point of our plane of occlusion relative to Camper's line. When we go to set teeth, we're actually using the mandibular cast. So if this is an interesting picture from Dental Dad Diary, and in it, you can see here, after we initially set the anterior maxillary teeth, then the anterior mandibular teeth, and from there, the next step is to set our mandibular posterior teeth. And what we're going to do is take a line from the tip of the canine straight back to one half to two thirds up the retromolar pad and that will establish our level, our plane of occlusion. And of course that's in this methodology of setting teeth. We're in the residency, we've been setting lingualized non-balanced occlusion. However, like Dr. K and Dr. Dre both mentioned, it's still soft tissue reference point. So just like a carpenter, measure twice, cut once. So often when you're setting teeth, and this is a, I'm going to use this example, one of my colleagues' uh, dentures, this is complete against removable. Uh, typically what we'll do is pretend that these are the 
mandibular denture teeth that are already set. So we've set the maxillary anterior teeth and then we set the mandibular anterior teeth and then from there we draw a line from the tip of the canine to two-thirds to one-half to two-thirds up the retromolar pad in an effort to establish our occlusal plane. So although we established it with our fox plane, the level of the occlusal plane uh, parallel with camper's line, uh, when we actually go to set the teeth, we're actually using uh, this mandibular reference point. So again, it, it really comes into play that perhaps using, in this situation, using camper's line is just another reference guide, sort of another measurement to make sure that you're on track with more of the art of dentistry than perhaps the science. Hopes that helps. Cheers.